I left Britain about a month and a half ago to get to Hubei province in China and at the time I thought this was a really stupid decision. So I did not expect the situation that we're in now that actually Wuhan is safer than Britain. How has China taken control of this crisis? Well, I've been living in Shanghai with Wu Ming for the last three weeks. I want to show you a bit of an insight into life here in China at the moment. And in particular, three things the Chinese government have done to control the crisis that I think would be pretty hard in Britain. It's not all sunshine and daffodils. I'll talk a bit about the darker side at the end of the video. The Chinese government collect an immense amount of data about their citizens and they're using it in novel ways to tackle the coronavirus. Every time Wu Ming and I want to leave the apartment complex, she's got to scan her face and those images as well as the images from all the CCTV cameras in China, of which there are about 200 million, are fed into a central database and then analysed using machine learning. So it means basically if you're in sight of a camera, with about five on this crossroads, then it's likely that the Chinese government have analysed your face and know where you are. Another big source of data is the WeChat app. You might have heard of it. So that's WeChat, it's social media and your debit card all rolled into one super app, which is really convenient, but obviously also tracks. So the state know where you are, what you've bought and what you're saying to friends. That's just the status quo and the Chinese people generally know about this. The images you see are actually from the state media. But they're using this data to try the highest tech epidemic control ever attempted. So if you get ill in China and you go to a hospital, the hospital will register with the authorities and the authorities will pull your name down from this big database and they have an algorithm that will be able to tell you all the different places that you've been in the last 14 days and all the people that you might have been in contact with. So the bread that you bought with the WeChat app, the baker now will be notified that they have to self-quarantine for 14 days. And the people that you were next to on the flight, they now have to self-quarantine for the next 14 days. Every single citizen has a code, red, amber or green. I guess you are yellow. <laughs> Why? Why? Because you come to Shanghai, not have 14 days. Uh, I'm a green. Safe. <laughs> <laughs> but if I'm yellow, shouldn't you be yellow? <laughs> no, just you are yellow. Uh, maybe next week you, you are green. Good. <laughs> Some city uh, only green. You can drive car in on the road. If you the other colors, you can't drive <laughs> on the road. Yes. Yeah. This does seem to be working because you can identify and contain hotspots before they get out of control, and it means that people can continue working if they're not at a risk of contamination, and then self-isolate if they are. We're in Shanghai, which is about 500 kilometers away from Wuhan, and the city's been locked down for months now. I mean, it's beginning to come back to life a bit. Oh. Last time I was here, there was basically no one here. So it's good the city's beginning to open up a bit. But generally, you're not allowed to eat in the restaurants. You're allowed to buy takeaway, um, but you're not allowed to sit down and eat. This is Wu Ming's Tai Chi studio. My name is Wu Ming. I'm a Tai Chi teacher. This is uh, my Tai Chi school. Uh, because why was so, we can't uh, teach our student. I don't know when we can uh, open the door um, welcome my student. Maybe next, maybe month. So I'm wait, somebody give me repeat. The crisis has been a massive cost to the Chinese economy. They've taken the hit early on and hoping to reopen now most of the country. Every single person that comes into China now has to self-quarantine for two weeks. So every day I have to fill in this grid with my temperature. I'm just doing it now. 35.7, I don't know if that's low or not, but it's not a fever. 
And any flight coming into the country is screened. We've been waiting in Shanghai Airport for about two hours now. We'll get there eventually. Compare that to Britain, where many flights left Italy, the centre of the European outbreak on arrival, not even temperatures were taken. Controls were even tighter in Wuhan and Hubei, where you basically weren't allowed to leave the house. And you could only drive with a special permit. It's been the most aggressive disease control attempt ever in history. And it does seem to be working because if people stay at home, the only people they can infect are their families, and then the transmission of the virus stops. So complete lockdown, tracing those with the virus with big data, and the glue that holds it all together is the intense promotion of social solidarity. The government have framed this as a people's war against the virus. There does seem to be a coming together of China. For example, 20,000 medical workers flew into Wuhan to help with the crisis. There's moving images of the doctors, both male and female, having their hair cut because supposedly there isn't time to shower. These messages of solidarity are all over social media and big adverts like these. We do it. Overcoming the epidemic requires collective action and personal sacrifice like not panic buying and staying at home when you're told to. And the Chinese state has tools like these, screens in every public space, as well as controlling social media. And that has meant that the Chinese populace has complied uh, with the requirements to control the virus and not only comply but feel proud about it, at least on the whole. Comparing these bold actions of the Chinese state against Britain's response, which has been wash your hands, it could make Western democracies look impotent and that's certainly the narrative that the Chinese media are pushing. But as you've probably thought to yourself watching this video, there are downsides to these policies. I'm not going to talk about them, I'm in China to share their ancient philosophy and Tai Chi and all these wonderful things about China and I don't want to risk anyone around me uh, but if you want to learn more I would read Orwell and I've linked some articles and videos in the description. I'd love to hear your thoughts on what we should and shouldn't take from China's experience. In this time of crisis where I'm worrying about my loved ones like I imagine you are I hope that we can get through this and I hope that we remember our values, the values of freedom and mutual respect Historically and today, these aren't the norm, and so they're precious. Thanks for watching. I will see you when I see you next. Mask back on.